Hey everyone, Eric Stackelbeck here. It's a special Thanksgiving Day edition of the Watchman Newscast, and we are taking you to Jerusalem for an up-close look at an amazing archaeological find dating back some 2,600 years to the time of the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem. You will see your Bible come to life today. Stick around. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. If you're like me and you live in the United States, you are celebrating the Thanksgiving holiday today. It's a special day, a time to spend time with your family, your loved ones, and give thanks to God. That's a great thing. And you get to eat a lot of good food. So I'll be with my family today, eating some turkey, having some laughs, and really just thanking God for what he's done over the past year. Now, it's been a difficult time, obviously, for the world and right here in the United States. And hey, personally this year, in the past 10 months alone, folks, I lost my mom, I lost an aunt, and I lost an uncle all in the span of 10 months. But you know what? First Thessalonians says we are to praise God and thank God in all circumstances. Think of King David, all the trials and tribulations that he went through. But when you read the Psalms, constantly praise is on his tongue. He's thanking God, not for what he doesn't have, but for what he does have. Amid all the storm, he's still praising God and remembering the good things that he does have. And hey, I am very thankful for my health, for my wife, my daughters, and for you, the Watchman News Channel viewers, I feel like I've learned more from the trials and tribulations and the failures in my life than I have when things were smooth sailing. God oftentimes uses tumultuous times like we're living in right now around the world. He will use this to refine our character, to grow us as believers, and to draw us closer to Him. So again, happy Thanksgiving, something I am very thankful for as a guy who didn't come from much from a working class neighborhood in Northeast Philadelphia, I am very thankful and in awe of God that I'm able to get on the ground in his land in Israel five, even sometimes six times a year. Folks, I am a very unlikely story and I thank God every single day for the opportunities he has given me, not only here on the news channel with you all, but on the Watchman TV show on TBN. The places I've gone, I shake my head, I pinch myself and say, what am I doing here? A guy from Philly, I'm on this archaeological dig where I'm walking where Jesus walked or I'm talking to this top official. But those opportunities are golden. And we had one that I wanted to share with you on this Thanksgiving day to encourage you and lift your spirits. We love to focus on biblical archaeology a lot of times on the Watchman TV show and here on the newscast as well from time to time because it shows you how the Bible is coming to life today for such a time as this. And God is revealing himself and the truth of the Bible through this biblical archaeology. So we did a great one last year at the city of David, ancient Jerusalem, perhaps my favorite place in all of Jerusalem, with a top Israeli archaeologist. This was a Watchmen exclusive at the time it aired on the Watchmen TV show, which you can catch if you're in the States every Thursday night on TBN, the world's largest Christian television network. Hey, if you don't have TBN where you live around the world, you can catch full episodes of the Watchmen show right here on our Watchmen News channel. Just subscribe and click the notification bell. You'll get alerts every time a new video, a new episode of the show is posted. But we were in Jerusalem at the City of David, exclusive access with the Israel Antiquities Authority to some amazing finds. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Some amazing finds from 2,600 years ago, the time of that notorious event, the Babylonian destruction of the first temple, the burning of Jerusalem by the forces of King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. Hey, a lot of people say, well, the Bible is a bunch of fairy tales. It's not true. But what we are about to show you is irrefutable archaeological evidence of events described in your Bible from the Watchman TV show. Take a look.
If talk, it's time for the big reveal. As if this stamp, this seal wasn't amazing enough, we have something even more spectacular to show you folks. If talk, lead the way. Let's go. To the next room in this ancient first temple period structure at the Givati archaeological dig, an active dig here at the city of David in Jerusalem. On our way there, take a look at these massive stones at the entrance to the room. These ashlars, stones that were chiseled in order to have a square shape, is another indication for the high rank of the person who lived here. Yeah, Iftak, nicely done, this, this work, first of all, the masonry work, I guess you would say. Right. And again, very well preserved. These look like pillars. It is. Th these are piers, not exactly pillars, but these are piers who carry the roof of the second floor that we talked about before, who yeah. collapsed down uh, during the fire. And again, folks, we see the debris here. We see the rubble. 2,600 years ago, right here. Yeah, this is a snapshot for the, the day of the destruction. That horrible Babylonian destruction under King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, well, shall we go inside the room? Yeah. A very important room, as you said. Okay, Eric, now we are in the most important room of the uh, structure that we, we dug. First, you can see here remains of the destruction. Yeah, the black. I mean, Iftak, I see black everywhere on these walls. The charring from the burning from the Babylonians. Exactly. These are remains of the beams that carried the floor of the second floor. Wow. Just crashed Just together. crashed right down. Yeah. And we then pottery vessel that were used at the second floor falling down. Wow, so that's a pottery vessel right there, 2,600 years old. Exactly. And just so folks know, we are underground. We're, we're deep underground here at the Kivati Dig. Mm -hmm. uh, this once was surface level, but it's been buried over thousands of years. Exactly. Now, one of the most incredible finds that we got here in this room right on the floor is a bula. A bula is a stamp seal. You remember the, the seal we saw before? Yeah. So this is the result of a seal this way basically a piece of clay okay. that was used to seal a document. You can still see the back side, the remains of the papyrus that was here and the, 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 the... Not paper, but the papyrus in that day that it was sealed onto. Exactly. The ancient parchment. Mm -hmm. And why is it so important? Because of the name that is written here. Yeah, you can see the ancient Hebrew writing there. Exactly. Now, you can see the writing. This, this is how we found it. It was this clear when we, when we found it in the excavation. It was not coming from sifting or anything. It was just found here in the dirt. In this very room. Exactly. And again, we're talking about the walls. This is very well preserved. You it can is. see the writing clearly, Iftak. It is. It's, it's very unique. When, actually, when, when it was found, and you can imagine the, the yelling that came. Uh, of course. We heard it from above, and we came down here, and it took us a few minutes, but we were able to read most of the letters right here on the spot. Wow. And the inscription says, Le Netan Melech, Eved HaMelech, to Netan Melech, or actually belonging to Netan Melech, the servant of the king. Now, tell us who he was. Okay, so first by his title, the servant of the king, you can understand that this is an official, this is a person of high rank, someone who had uh, uh, worked in the uh, um, king court. Yeah. So a high-ranking government official at that time. Servant of the king is a title, not of a servant, but an official yeah. of the king. In the king's court, exactly. in his cabinet, I guess you would say. All right, exactly. Now, Netan Melech is a very rare name. We, we, it was never found in any of the documents outside of the Bible. And in the Bible, it's only mentioned once in the book of Kings 2. And we, now we're talking about the days of Josiah. Yeah. The, the King Josiah, the great reformer, yeah. Exactly. During his reform, according to the text, he also burnt the chariots of the sun that were in the Temple Mount. We don't know exactly what it means, but it's probably part of the Assyrian cult to the sun, some kind of a chariot that used to go from east to west in the morning, depicting the movement of the sun. This was pagan worship, or idol worship, on the Temple Mount, right. of all places. Exactly. And Josiah said, no more. Mm -hmm. So he... According to the text, he burned down the chariot and he gave the horses to his servant, Netan Melech, to take the horses to his house outside of the city somewhere. The name is rare. It's mentioned here and mentioned in, in the book. The epigraphy, the shape of the letters, dates the inscription to late 7th, early 6th century, the days of uh, Josiah. And may I hold it, this, by the of way? Of course. Thank you, my That's friend. And please continue as I just admire this incredible archaeological find, 2,600 years old, 2 Kings, Natan Melech, the 
court of King Josiah. Please continue, Iftak, as I admire that. So I'm saying the dating is the same. It was found in a structure from the days of this king. So I can't say for 100% that this Arwen et and et from the Bible are the same person, but it is likely they are. Yeah, very, very likely. You know, I thought I had a cool job. You might have the coolest job ever. Uh, uncovering that's, finds that's like this. I think, and this is this is a, a unique job. It yeah. gives you an opportunity to touch things from yeah. from the past. If talk, we have to let you go to do some more digging and and to make some more incredible discoveries here at the City of David. But before you go, can I hold this one more time? Just one more. Sure. Thank you, my friend. Folks, not many people in the world are getting a chance to hold this incredible archaeological find from 2,600 years ago. Natan Melek from 2 Kings, to say I'm thrilled is an understatement. Wow. A Watchman exclusive here at the Givati Dig at the City of David, our favorite place in Jerusalem. Folks, I'm almost kind of sad when I watch that segment because I am homesick for Jerusalem. I can't wait until these COVID-19 travel restrictions are lifted so I can get back to Jerusalem and elsewhere in the land of Israel to bring you these on-the-ground, cutting-edge stories that you won't see anywhere else. God willing, we will be back very soon, hopefully the first half of 2021. I will be praying for that, and I hope you are too. Hey, it is Thanksgiving. And we want to thank you, our loyal Watchman Newscast viewers, for all you do, for tuning in, for spreading the word about us here on the Watchman News channel. And to do that, we've got a special offer for you. We are partnering with a great company called Artsa. Now, if you've watched previous newscasts, you may have heard me talk about them. Artsa brings premium Israeli-made products to your doorstep in a box. It's about the size of a shoe box. You see it there on your screen. But inside that box, it is chock full of goodies made in Israel by Israeli artisans, entrepreneurs, and small businesses. It's a taste of Israel, made in Israel. You're blessing and supporting the Israeli economy. You're fulfilling that biblical mandate. Genesis 12, 3, blessing Israel, blessing the Jewish people by blessing Israeli businesses at a time when they're really struggling, folks. Israel has had some pretty severe lockdowns due to COVID-19. They could use a real boost. This is helping to do that. And the best part about this particular Arts of Box that we're offering right now is that it is from Bethlehem, meaning there is a Bethlehem theme to this particular Arts of Box. They are seasonal boxes. We had Nazareth in the fall. Now in the wintertime, we are presenting a Bethlehem box with Artsa. We'll have Galilee, we'll have Jerusalem as 2021 uh, goes on. But, hey, it's Christmas time, right? It's the Christmas season. Today's Thanksgiving Day, big shopping weekend. My wife will be out there, I'm sure, getting Christmas gifts for everyone over the weekend. Uh, Tuesday is, or is it Monday? I'm sorry. Uh, November 30th is Cyber Monday, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I can't really keep up with all of it. I'm not a big shopper, as you might be able to tell. But Cyber Monday coming up, a perfect day to purchase an Artsa box with the Watchman discount. It's Watchman18, that's the code. It's artsabox.com. Hey, what a unique conversation piece at Christmas to present someone with a box of goods made in Bethlehem, the place of Christ's birth. What a cool gift. I love what Artsa is doing. And hey, I don't partner with a company or an organization if I don't believe in what they are doing. You're fulfilling the biblical mandate to bless Israel here, and you're blessing the body of Christ in Israel by purchasing an Artsa box. So take advantage of this special discount, perfect Christmas gift for the Israel lover, the Bible lover in your life. Maybe they've never been to Israel, they've been once and haven't returned. Hey, this will get you very close. It's a taste of the Holy Land. Artsabox.com, Watchman 18. Take advantage of it. It's a great offer. Hey, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. We are thankful for everyone out there. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Until then, enjoy your turkey. And remember, never hold your peace.